we're ready to start talking about some other methods of integration. But before we do, I want to remind you that in the last video, we reviewed the basic integrals you should be familiar with. The power rule, the reciprocal function, 1 over x, exponential functions like e to the x or 2 to the x, and trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, etc. And I mentioned in that video that all of the integrals we'll do throughout the rest of the course are all found in that list. What we're going to do now is we're going to learn how more complicated forms can be broken down and written in the form of one of those. And I'll show you how to do this with u substitution first. And this method is maybe the most important one to understand, not just because it's the most common one we'll use throughout the whole semester, but more importantly, it forms a foundation that all of the other methods of integration, almost all of them, have some form of substitution in them. So if you can understand the concept of substitution and how substituting can make our lives easier, then when you learn a new form of substitution, it's not that hard to get that distinction. Let's start with an example, because it'll make more sense if we illustrate this with an example. Let's start the same way we did in the last video by taking a derivative first and then working backwards to find the integral. So let's do the derivative of e to the 5x, for instance. You should know how to do this using the chain rule, but if you need to review, you should pause the video and make sure you can do this problem on your own. The answer would, is going to be e to the 5x times 5. And if you remember, when you learned the chain rule in Calc 1, you learned how to take the derivative of the inner function and then the outer function and make, combine them in this way, where you take the derivative of the outer function with respect to that inner function and then take the derivative of the inner function with respect to x and multiply them in this way. So anytime you would use the chain rule to differentiate, start thinking about using u substitution to integrate. That's a good hint if you're looking for when you should use u substitution. And after you've seen a bunch of examples, you'll have a better sense of when to use u substitution. But generally speaking, if you would use the chain rule to differentiate some kind of function, you'll probably use u substitution to integrate it. So the integral of this one, we know the integral of 5e to the 5x should be e to the 5x plus c, just because that's the antiderivative. We started with e to the 5x and took its derivative, so we know the antiderivative should look like this. Okay, let's use that to build a slightly different example. If we just wanted the integral of e to the 5x on its own, what would that need to be? Now, I want you to think about this one before you let me answer it. Think about what the answer should be and see if you can write it down on your own. If we use the previous example as a pattern, when we integrated 5e to the 5x, we add e to the 5x in our answer. It seems like we're still going to have e to the 5x in our answer, right? Nothing's really changed other than we're missing this multiple of 5, which means if, we, if we're missing that, it's as if we've divided the question by that, so we should also divide the answer by that. And if you'd like to check, you can differentiate 1 fifth e to the 5x and make sure you get e to the 5x back. Now notice, I've done no substitution. I've done nothing special other than just looking at a derivative and then interpreting what the answer should be based on that. And to give you a little preview, after we've talked about substitution and after you've done a dozen of these problems or dozens of these problems, you may find that you can mentally do this sort of thing where you can jump to the answer by thinking about what function would have the derivative that I'm looking at. What function would have the derivative of e to the 5x, for instance. And if you can get to that point, that's great. I don't want to discourage you from that, but try to make sure that you can do it the systematic way first before trying to jump to the answer. But you may get to the point where you're comfortable doing that. Okay, so how are we going to use substitution? Let me show you the same example using substitution, specifically what we're going to call u substitution, because we'll have other types of substitution later on. So I'm going to do the same example, but illustrate it 
using u substitution. And of course, once we learn how to do it on this relatively easy problem, we can apply the same process to more complicated ones. So to do u substitution, what you want to learn how to do is you want to learn how to look at a problem like this and match it to one of the common forms, one of those basic integrals that we reviewed in the last video. So remember, there's a short list. There's something like x to the n, 1 over x, e to the x, or any other base to the x, and then all of the trig functions. And you want to think, on a basic level, which form does this match? And it should be clear to you that the form this matches is e to the power of x. And of course, the integral of that is just e to the x plus c. So if the question was just e to the x, we would have no problem doing it. The complication is that now we've got a 5 thrown into that power, which changes things. And it doesn't change them dramatically. It doesn't change the entire form of the problem. It just changes some of the details. So with substitution, we look at this and we say, I really wish that was e to the x instead of e to the 5x. So let's make that happen. In other words, let's make a substitution so that we do just have e to the x. Now, it would get confusing if we use x to mean two different things. So instead, we're going to use a different letter. And you might have guessed that we're going to use e to the u. That's where we get the term u substitution. So we just need another letter here so that we don't confuse ourselves with what x represents. So in the original problem, we have e to the 5x. And we say we want this to be the form just e to the power of a variable by itself. So let's define a variable so that that's true. That's the key to substitution. That's the entire point, is we say we wish we had this form, so let's make it happen. So let's define this u. And when we do that, a couple of things happen. But as long as we're careful and consistent, this will work to do this kind of integral. And it's a really powerful tool. It's a really simple concept. But if you can get that concept and you can be careful with the details, it unlocks a whole section of integrals that we would be unable to do otherwise. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a variable u, which will just be equal to 5x. Notice what we've done there is we've just defined what we wanted the power to be. We wanted the power to be just the variable. So we replace 5x with u. So that defines u for us. The second part of the problem is the part that's not very familiar at first, and it seems kind of tricky at first. But once you get used to it, it's not too bad. So if you look at this differential, the differential dx, that's the part that tells us that the integral is done with respect to x. And in our substituted version, we have du. So we need to translate that. And you can't just replace dx with du. If you do, you're not actually substituting, you're just erasing 5x and replacing it with u. If you're actually doing a substitution, every time you change out x, you need to carefully change out for something in terms of u. So we need to be careful replacing the dx with du. It's not just necessarily a one-for-one -one swap. All right, so how do you get du? The key to this is that when we're dealing with this differential, that's the term for that dx or du, du is going to be the derivative of whatever u is with respect to x times dx. So that's an important piece to re recognize. And once you get that figured out, everything else is very straightforward. If it helps, you can think about the fact that du over dx equals u prime. And you can kind of imagine multiplying both sides by dx. Now, to be precise, I should tell you that that doesn't actually work quite that way because du and dx are not numerical things. They are special differential things that don't quite work the same way. But in most practical senses, you can kind of imagine them rearranging just like algebraic things do. So just to be precise, I should tell you it doesn't quite work that way, but it does help if you're trying to remember how this works. Once you do a couple of these problems, it'll become second nature very quickly that once you know what u is, du is just the derivative of that with dx tagged on. So in our example, if u is 5x, 
du would be the derivative of 5x, which is just 5, and then tag on dx. Okay, so once we have that, we need to make our substitution, and we already know that the e to the 5x is going to get replaced with e to the u. But now we run into another tricky part because we've replaced e to the 5x with e to the u. That worked out okay. But when we go to replace dx, it doesn't quite map to du. So it takes a little bit of cleverness to figure out how this is going to work. But if you look at carefully, we have the connection between du and dx here. If du equals 5 times dx, what does dx equal in terms of du? In other words, if you solve that for dx, what do you get? It shouldn't be hard to see that what you get is 1 fifth times du. And once you do that, then you can integrate this, because now you have this basic form, which is one that we know the answer to automatically. We know that the integral of e to the u, du, is e to the u plus c. So our answer is going to be e to the u plus c, with, of course, the 1 fifth getting carried along for the ride. And that's our answer, but notice that we don't want the answer in terms of u. We want the answer in terms of x, just like the question was in terms of x. So we'll replace the u back with its definition in terms of x. And that seems like a lot the first time you see it, or maybe the second time you see it. But after you've done this a few times, this process becomes almost second nature. What we've done is we've taken an integral that we couldn't do originally, and we sidestepped, sort of, into a substituted version with u instead of x as our variable. And when we do that, when we sidestep, when we substitute, we have to be careful about our substitution. We can pick the substitution we want. We decide what we want u to be in order to make our integral as simple as possible. But that determines the differential then. And once that's determined, we have to be careful with our substitution. But once we do, we can integrate in terms of u. And then our answer is one step away because we just resubstitute. We sidestep back into terms of x. So we start in x land, we sidestep into u land, we integrate, and then we step back into x land. So once you get used to that process, again, it's fairly straightforward. It just takes a little bit of practice, but we're going to do plenty of these examples, and I'll show you plenty more that you should do on your own. And once you do, you should get very comfortable with this process. And it's an incredibly powerful one because we can take all sorts of different things, as you'll see in the examples, and as long as it fits more or less the form of one of those basic integrals, such that we can do a substitution like this, we can use this process to integrate really complicated looking things. So in the next videos, we'll do more examples and we'll see how this can be applied to all sorts of functions.